Hey everyone, in this video we'll be getting started with using Doubler2 in Ableton Live Lite. This video will be for any new users who have purchased a studio kit that comes with a copy of Live Lite and will be a great help if you're new to music production and haven't used Ableton before. We'll be going through the basics of using Doubler and what you need to know about Ableton to actually start making some music. So first let's start with what is Ableton. Ableton is a DAW or Digital Audio Workstation, often referred to as a DAW. A DAW is software that allows you to record, arrange and produce music and what we can do is use Doubler as a MIDI controller to control and record sounds or instruments with Ableton. So first let's go to the Doubler app and make sure we have everything set up correctly to get started. The Doubler app is a standalone app which means it's separate from Ableton. If you've already opened Ableton you may have seen Doubler MIDI capture listed in the plugin list but we'll go into that later on in the video. For now we just need the standalone Doubler app open. The first thing we need to do is make sure a mic is calibrated in Doubler and we follow the audio setup wizard. If you're using the Doubler USB mic simply make sure it's connected and follow the steps in the audio setup wizard. It's important to remember for the best results we recommend using a dynamic microphone. Once you've followed the steps in the app and your mic is calibrated let's open up a blank profile. Now we're in the play tab. As part of the audio setup wizard, it's explained that Doubler has inbuilt audio as well as MIDI out. Doubler's inbuilt sounds can't be used to record and are just so we can get some feedback in the app without having to connect to a DAW. As we'll be using the sounds within Ableton, let's turn the inbuilt audio off. If the audio setup wizard has got you set up with ASIO for all, I'd recommend heading to the audio settings and setting the output device to none just to keep things simple. Once this is done we won't hear any sounds from Doubler itself and we can head over to Ableton to get it connected. In Ableton open the preferences and head to the link MIDI tab. Make sure the track and remote are both ticked for Doubler 2. After this head to the plugins tab and make sure the VST3 system folder is on. Then finally we can head to the audio tab. This section is important to ensure we get the best performance in terms of latency and accuracy while using Doubler. If you're on Mac, you can select the output you want to use and adjust the buffer size below to 128. If you're on Windows, you'll first want to make sure you have an appropriate ASIO driver selected and then adjust the buffer size to 128 samples. We recommend the free ASIO for all driver for Windows and you can find more information about setting that up in the description of this video. Once that's done, we can now exit the preferences. Also, don't worry, you won't need to repeat these steps every time you launch Ableton. We'll use the tab button on the keyboard to switch to the more linear arrangement view. This is easier for starting to make music, but we've also dropped a link below to a tutorial about navigating the more loop-focused session view. The first thing you'll see in an empty project is four tracks, two audio tracks and two MIDI tracks. These are the two types of tracks you use in Ableton to make music. Audio tracks are only used to record and play audio files, so for example if you recorded your voice with a mic or a guitar with your sound card. MIDI tracks on the other hand will hold virtual instruments or samples that we can control with Doubler, so for this video we can just ignore the audio tracks. On the left hand side here we can navigate and find instruments and sounds we want to use on our MIDI tracks. So let's first go to instrument rack and in here you'll see a list of categories available that each contain different sounds. You can hear examples by clicking once on the sound. Once you've picked one, you can either double click to add it to the first MIDI track or click and drag it over. We'll go with the basic sign keys patch. Now the instrument has appeared on our track, we can select Doubler 2 in the MIDI from drop down and pick the MIDI channel we want to receive information from. Channel 1 is pitch, 10 is drums. After arming the track we can now sing into the mic to hear it back as that instrument. If a channel isn't armed you won't hear anything. All of Live's instrument presets come with handy macro controls that you can use to shape your sound. You can click the arrangement record button to record but first I'm gonna turn on the metronome in the top left here. We're at 120 BPM so I have a beat to get the timing right. Also before recording there's a key tip to bear in mind in order to get the best results with Doubler. It's best to sing with confident plucky syllables like ba, cha, ka, ta 
as opposed to aola, etc. Also, we can use doubler's key restriction to set a scale for our song. In the key tab, you can use the sing in notes feature to quickly sing your idea in, and doubler will then offer a list of the best fitting keys. <laughs> We can pick a major or minor scale as these are the best to get started and then press update. Now we're back in the play tab with the scale best fitted to our idea. This feature will correct every note we sing to the chosen scale. Once I'm ready, I can click this record button to put my idea down. Now we have our MIDI clip and we can edit it. The first step is cutting it up into smaller clips that we like. We can do this by selecting the cut point and using the command or control E shortcut. Then you can double click the clip and delete notes or drag notes around to change the pitch for example. One important tip is quantizing your notes. Quantizing means moving all the notes so they fit the beat of your project. You can right click to reveal the quantize settings and we'll go for 16th note quantization. For a second melodic example, we'll now use Doubler's MIDI capture plugin for a bass sound. This plugin requires an empty MIDI channel, so we'll create one by right-clicking any of the channels and clicking Create New MIDI Channel. MIDI Capture will be found in the Plugins tab and we can drag it into this new MIDI channel. Now we'll create one more MIDI channel and load up a bass instrument. This basic electric drive preset should be okay. If you arm this channel, you'll hear it when you sing with Doubler. To record with MIDI Capture, all you have to do is click on it to show the plugin and then hit spacebar. The benefit of MIDI Capture is that it cleans up your recording, getting rid of any short or faulty notes. This saves time and prevents you from having to do a lot of cleanup after recording. <laughs> Now that we're done with the recording, we can choose between the raw and clean clips. Since we were singing single notes, it'll be better to go with the clean one because my singing was a bit shaky at times. All we have to do is drag and drop the clip to the bass channel. This message will come up sometimes saying import tempo and time signature to your arrangement. You can just say don't show again and no. In that recording, I was trying out different single notes with the melody. This is a more experimental approach and the goal is to find bass notes that go with the melody notes. We can then cut up the clips that work and loop those or manually input more notes by double clicking the MIDI clip and editing. As before, Command or Control E is a really useful keyboard shortcut to split the clips. Here I found a clip I like, moved around some notes and manually input a note one octave higher for example. You can input notes by double clicking empty slots in the MIDI clip. So that's how to record some melodies in, now let's take a look at recording some drums. Drums and samples are controlled using triggers, so the first thing we need to do is record some triggers into Doubler. Triggers work by assigning input sounds to MIDI notes of our choice, which in turn trigger drum samples in Ableton. Let's quickly record some triggers. Hit plus to go to the train tab and our first trigger is on C1. In most drum racks this is usually a kick, so let's train a butt sound. 
Short and sharp sounds work the best and remember to be consistent when you train your sound. We can also rename the trigger to help us remember what sound we use, so I'll rename this to butt kick. Let's repeat this for our second trigger. This time it's going to be for D1, which is usually a snare. For the hat, it's usually F1 or F sharp 1. So now we have our triggers trained, let's head into Ableton and load up a drum rack. Drum racks have their own selection on the left hand side, but we can pick them in just the same way as our other MIDI instruments. This time we'll choose MIDI channel 10 as the input in the MIDI channel for triggers. Each drum sound is played with a different MIDI note. We use the C1 kick and D1 snare notes when training our triggers, but you can change these to different notes in doubler as well. We'll record the kick and snare first. Now we'll quantize so that all the hits are on time and then we'll again go through the process of separating clips and moving around individual notes to taste. Next we'll manually program in some straight 16th note hi-hats by double clicking notes in the drum rack midi clip. Once we have a good groove, we can drag it to the start and loop it using the command or control D shortcut. Just as an extra note with drums, Live has a bunch of drum loops in the Clips tab that you can drag in to add additional percussion or rhythms that complement your beat. All you have to do is drag it below your channels and a new channel will be created with the Clips instrument. One last thing that can really help you get started with songs is chords. We had previously selected a key for our melody idea, but working in a key also allows you to use chord presets in the chords tab. We have more detailed videos about advanced chord presets, so for now we'll only use basic triads. You can enable triad chords by simply enabling chords in the play tab. We'll create a new MIDI channel and choose a pad from the instrument rack. This time we'll use the search function and simply type in pad. Usually producers record chords and then melodies and bass lines, but let's see if we can get something good by doing the opposite.
We've recorded a bunch of chords. Now in the arrangement view, we can duplicate our clips with Command or Control D and drag them around to lay the groundwork for a track arrangement. You can control volume at the far right of each channel where you can also solo, mute or pan the channels. There are tons of useful Ableton shortcuts and tricks for working in Arrangement View and Ableton have great learning resources on their website and YouTube channel that will hone your skills in no time. We hope this video has been helpful for your first sessions in Ableton. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us by leaving a comment or contacting our support team at help at voclia.co.uk. You can also submit a support ticket via your Voclia account and on our website and our team will get back to you right away. See you next time.